Battle of the Challenges podcast with Vincent Cloud and Famous Dave. This is the top 10 challenge seasons from 50 lists, part two, numbers five through number one. Uh, I want to do a really quick summary of the first 10 through six, Rivals 2, followed by number nine, Battle of the Seasons 1, then number eight was The Gauntlet 2, then number seven was cutthroat and number six was the gauntlet and right away when you hear this list have have any of your favorite seasons made the cut so far yeah rivals 2 was awesome uh inferno did you say inferno no 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 okay no. well maybe we'll get there oh my god yeah All on, right. on, on one of the infernos there's three of them yeah but i feel like one of them really stands out okay, uh, okay. gauntlet is awesome yeah Gauntlet is actually like probably my favorite season, you know, because they. they well, we're, we're not doing your top ten. We're no. doing the consensus of yes. fifty lists online. Okay. Yeah, including yours. I, I remember I texted you. I was like, "Hey man, what's your t- name? Your top five or your top three, something like that." And you you gave me a list. Then I asked DJ Maddie Nice, and he gave me a list. And then I made my list, and I'm like, "That's not good enough," you know. It's got. I want to see what else uh what other people think and shit so i went did the research 50 goddamn times it was horrible (laughs) but after all it was said and done i was really impressed with the list some of my like i said before some of my favorites made the list and it was really interesting the placement of all of them you know so let's continue on to number five can you predict it what do you think it is (laughs) um the duel. Duel 2? Fresh Meat 2. Fresh Meat 2, yes. yes. That's definitely top five material. Fresh um, Meat 2 is one of my favorite seasons. Yeah, it, it was actually the very first season I've ever watched. And it wow, was, yeah. what an introduction. Yeah, what? Yeah, exactly. And it really set the bar in terms of the uh, political aspect of these shows. You know, it's never really got to that level it can get close, especially if Wes is involved, because Wes was part of that Kenny, you know, it was the Kenny versus Wes show, you know, that, that entire season. You mm-hmm. know? So much so that uh, it was all, that was how the trailer was cut, you know. Um, Wes and Kenny became so popular from this rivalry that they were on these 7-Eleven commercials together, like twice, you know, where they're like, they yeah, were? Yeah, yeah, awesome. they were, yeah, it was crazy. But yeah, there was this political intrigue that was probably the highest it's ever been. Where like literally, like you see Kenny and Wes having to deal with their campaigns crumbling, or you know how what what can they do to save them and shit like that. Every single episode, and it was back and forth. At oh, yeah. one point, if Kenny is just dominating because they keep winning, and he's getting the upper hand, but then Wes like goes out and gets a recruit and land in. Oh, and then you have these wild cards that were uh, Jen and Ryan. Yeah, double where, agents. Yeah, who they're, they're playing both sides and you don't know whose side they're really on. It was it had everything. And if anything, at number five, it might even be too low for me. I would rank it in my top three, I feel like. Everything in that season was great. Like Even down to the little details, like the location. It was in Canada, in the woods, yeah. in like this awesome uh, cabin in the woods. Like this nice... like. Almost looks like a ski resort type of house. I would like a, a like a lodge, like a mm-hmm. ski lodge. Yeah. Or something like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cabin in the woods. You you think of like the movie, The Cabin in the Woods, where like there's yeah. zombies and shit. We're talking upscale, like half Evil a million dead. dollar cabin in the woods. Yeah, but that would be great if Laura was like like thumbing through the Necronomicon. <laughs> She's bored. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That'd be great. And like during the exile, they have to outrun the fucking evil force, where it's like it just sees your point of view. You remember the Evil Dead, right? Oh the yeah. It's like like zooming through the woods and shit. That'd be great. And then Wes gets caught because he's too tired. Mandy's like able to outrun it and shit like that. <laughs> oh, you made me think of the Evil Dead and the challenge at the same time. Oh, that would have been terrific. But and then Fresh Meat, uh, that franchise is really cool um i'll just say this right now fresh meat one doesn't make the list it made it made lists but just not as much as fresh meat two and all the other seasons it would probably rank around like i think 
13, 14, or 15 in that range for me. I think I think it was, yeah, uh, top, top yeah. 15 for sure. One of my favorite parts about the fresh meat seasons was the fact of the eliminations where the two teams that are going to elimination, they go off, and then the entire house is not there to witness what happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just have a van drive back up, and you're like, who's going to come out of the van? Who survived and who went home? You have no idea. And you have two different sides of alliances, and they're both rooting for certain people to come back. And just that surprise element was always fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was great. And then uh, going back to the Fresh Meat 2 theme, you get a fresh cast, like like new people, like new blood in a season goes a long way. Um, the only time it didn't really work was Bloodlines, but that wasn't their fault. It was because the season was so fucked up and janky and shit like that. And yeah, I, I feel like a lot of the issues of the Bloodlines was this production, which, like, how they flip-flop teams. There was partners, and then there was a blue team and red team, and then it was back to partners. And they kept messing with the format, and they wouldn't just stick to something. Oh, yeah. Divided. A whole house divided by Team West and Team Kenny. But I also have to mention... Team West, it should be Team West and Team Evelyn. Like, Evelyn was a huge part of that alliance. Like, she told West what to do in, 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 in ways that was very, you know, like, convincing. Like, you don't own, owe Kenny shit. He fucked you over so many times. It's about time you do something like that. And West like, you're absolutely right. You know what I mean? But even before that, in other ways, uh, Evelyn would be like, that's a stupid idea. Don't do that. We're going to, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like she would just. There's there's oh. not a lot of people who can match wits with Wes. And mm-hmm. Evelyn absolutely did. Yeah. It was yeah. great. It was terrific. Yeah. And, and Evelyn actually out, out, uh, outlasts Wes. They're actually pitted together and she beats Wes to remain in the house for X amount of days. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. That that was a really good showing for Evelyn, you know, overall too. Yeah. You know, like ah, oh, and that like Evelyn's like my favorite of all time. So it was great and to have her in the season. There and like there's a lot of other great moments where it's just like uh, alliances being formed, like when Wes and Landon struck a deal to work together, which was unheard was, of. Landon never strikes yeah, deals or it whatever. Was, yeah, it was a great moment. And then also just like Wes turning his back on his former castmate and Danny. But they were buddies, and Wes realized he needed to get rid of someone from his team. He's like, you know, out of my alliance, who do, who do I want to get rid of? And he turns his back on Danny, stabs him in the back, kind of. I, they Honestly, I remember the team basically coming to a consensus where they're like, the, we got to get rid of Danny. And Wes was like, fuck, like, that's my... Dude, that's my friend. But wasn't yeah. it just like the episode before, or like the couple days before, he had just had a sit down with Danny. He's like, "Yeah, we're we're together. I got your back, no matter what." Or something like that. That might have been moments before Danny made a fool of himself. Remember when, like, like Wes, like he bumped into Wes when he was trying to fight Brandon, and Wes hit his head and got knocked out for like two seconds or whatever, <laughs> and, and then he jumps on Brandon's back because he's trying to fight Danny and shit. Oh yeah, remember? Like it was everything was falling apart. And it's because Danny is a loose cannon. He's kind of a fuck up. He yeah. always has been. You know, is he loyal? Yeah, but I think Wes really had to be mature about it or whatever, and be like, I, I gotta cut him, or at least put you in elimination. You're not gonna lose. I mean, well, you're probably gonna lose. Danny has one of the worst uh, reputations in eliminations. Anyways, Fresh Me Two was great for all the reasons that we mentioned. Plus, you gotta talk about their ending, and their ending was spec- like really great because the juggernaut that was team Kenny is now at the end and the wild card Landon and Carly just bulldoze through them. And it was, it was just this terrific performance put on by Landon. Once again, it was crazy. It was, yeah, it was phenomenal. I, when I first watched this season, I was convinced that Kenny and Laurel were going to win. Yeah. Like Laurel was the rookie, just phenomenal rookie of the year. Yeah, and it was just like, it was, to me, I was like, you know what, I know that Kenny is going to win it with Laurel. I'm like, they made it to the final. There's no way they can lose. I just expected that. And as I'm watching it, just the shock of seeing Landon win with Carly. And, you know, Carly was not a great competitor. Mm -mm. She wasn't bad by any means. She was very solid, but she was not Laurel. For sure. Yeah. She definitely was not as good as Laura. That was the key. That was, I mean, that was the thing that threw you off. You're like, 
uh, she's not stopping, although she wants to, but, like, Landon's literally, like, puts his helmet up her ass and, like, pushes yeah, her up the mountain. They're climbing up the mountain, and Landon gets behind her, and he just nestles his head in his helmet between her butt cheeks and is just pushing her, giving her extra momentum to make it to the top. Oh, it was so good. Fucking that crazy. final, I think that final might be one of my f- most favorite finals of all time. It's definitely yeah. in top three. It might be number one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great stuff. Um, and the last time we ever saw it landed. Yeah. That's nuts. But a great way to go out, though. Yeah. Fuck yeah he went out like John Elway. He got the Super Bowl, and he left. You just lost so many ch- fucking challenge listeners. They're like, what the fuck is this NFL? John thing? Elway? Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> He was that other is great he, quarterback in the is 90s. He's a spokesperson for fucking Papa John's. Well, I don't want to fucking talk about him. I don't want to know. <laughs> no, that's Peyton Manning. It has nothing to do with pizza. John Elway is currently the uh, general manager for the Denver Broncos. Yeah? Yeah. Well, who signed Peyton Manning and won a Super Bowl? Oh. Who sponsored his Papa this John's? Is like the six it's, degrees it's of all Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Pizza. There, there is a connection pizza. between Elway and Papa John's. I didn't know that. That's crazy. All right, number four. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> um, <laughs> Look at this. What tops uh, Fresh Meat 2? What is better than Fresh Meat 2? Possibly Rivals 1? Okay. Number four, The Ruins. The original Champs versus Blank. You know what I mean? It really, like, this is... If you guys like when Terrell Owen shows up and then leaves, you, you will be a fan of the original idea of of champs versus challengers people that have came close but just you know out of their grasp but the champs team was so stacked with names and just you know fucking gods no land in them but so Durrell, who did they, yeah they had Durrell Wes the great return of Wes the most controversial thing about the season was because okay we gotta name the rest of the champs but everyone is just so the, these are Olympic gods we're going to talk about. Bananas uh, and Kenny. Was Evan was there, wasn't Evan, he? Derek, Cyrus the goddamn virus, um, Durrell. We said Durrell, right? Who else was there? That's enough. Was there was like seven, was there? seven guys and seven girls, right? Yeah. Do we name all seven? No, no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, but yeah, and then for the chicks, Evelyn, fantastic. Um, Veronica, Great as well. Uh, and then, then it kind of gets a little murky. Who else is it? Edie's. <laughs> was Rachel there? Rachel. I don't think Robinson? so. Robinson? No? No. Okay. She should have been. And so should yeah. have been Jody. But enough about that. Let's talk about who was there. Who else was there? Again, we were like, the stars. So basically, most of, Susie. Oh, yeah. yeah Susie, Susie was Susie great. Susie was great. Susie is so solid. Like, she's like a fucking killer in these things, man. And then there's other people. Who else? Katie. She won. Tanya. Oh, she's Katie. Won. Katie was great. Yeah. I really like Katie. And then uh, Joanna. Joanna Man, or whatever her name is. Joanna Want Kenny. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, and then... But there was a mutiny at the beginning of the season where on the champs team, Wes was the odd man out. You know, people didn't like his uh, political game because he was very upfront. About his political they, game. Fuck the political game. They didn't like him as a person. They all knew each other outside of the show. And like Joanna, like before that, remember Joanna and Kenny, they fucked on the island, you know? And they were all like, you know, I thought we were friends and shit like that. And so, and then remember, uh, Wes kept on saying, I'm not showing up, you know, because everyone talks to each other before they go on to the season. Evan's saying this. He's like, and I talked to everyone. And the only person that wouldn't give me a straight answer was Wes. He's like, I'm not showing up. I'm not showing up. You know, they're like, well, who's going to show up? And then he shows up. He's like, I don't fucking trust you in this game and shit like that. But it was just a great excuse not to like Wes. Everyone hated him. But the thing was, this was like in Rivals 1 where everyone hated CT. All they did was boost CT's star. All they did was boost Wes's star in the season. It was great. Oh, oh my God. If I didn't know From the beginning, Wes was. Wes was like, all right, if you guys don't like me, he's like, I'm just going to throw the challenge. Mm-hmm. I'll throw the mission today. It was great. Because he's on the rope and he's like shaking it, trying to get his own team members off. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's, it's such a wonder to behold because we're going to talk a lot about the champ stuff. I mean, I would if I could just go on about it. But the challengers, there really wasn't too much to offer. Um... All the props in the world to Kellyanne and Sarah for getting to the final and shit. But 
they were just bulldozed the entire season, you know. Uh, but the intriguing part was all the inner turmoil with the champions. Because let's, I'll just say this, the champions are mostly made out of assholes. They'll cutthroat people oh, that sure. are willing to get that win and shit like that. So, so it was so weird, all these assholes just saying like, Wes is the biggest, gapingest asshole of them all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was the craziest part. And it also involved like Joanna. She was like, she was like, if you don't stop fucking throwing these missions, because like this was a huge problem. She's like, I'm gonna fucking sell your house, asshole. Like, it's oh crazy. yeah, because what weren't she they said, married? Like, yeah, she's like, technically the house is in my name, even though you paid for it for by winning the duel and shit like that. I will sell that house if you keep throwing missions and shit. And Wes is in his own apartment, you know, getting. His dick sucked by Kelly at the time. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh, that's horrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. But overall, pretty sweet season. I mean, really, you know, really one-sided affair. But uh, yeah, the Yeah, the, the, the only letdown was maybe the final where, you know... You see all the champs win, and you're like, "Yeah, that's kind of what I expected." You're kind of, you're, you know, you're kind of rooting for the underdogs with Sarah and Kellyanne, but the Ultimate couldn't do it. Yeah. But even though the final wasn't the greatest, the entire season as a whole was so entertaining. Number three, guess what? The, guess the season. What, what well, it is number three, so we're gonna go with Inferno three, right? Wrong. No. Oh. The duel won. Okay, I thought that was gonna be number two. All right. It was, yeah, like, um, number two just barely edged it out for that second place. Like, the duel and the number two were just, like, neck and neck. Every time I was reading these lists, I was like, holy shit, you know? It was crazy. So, yeah, the duel won. First of all, I'm glad it makes the list because it's a great concept. It's one person, you know, one man, one woman are going to win, you know? And it was a huge uh, payment. It, it was. It was. It wasn't really top for the longest time. Not until uh, I want to say uh, Rivals Three or something. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. And the great cast. Like we had old school players and new school players. Uh, we covered this season, uh, the duel, where we were like, CT was a veteran, but. Only tested like a couple times. Brad was a veteran, but only tested a couple times. You know what I mean? Uh, so all the veterans that were there, they're like, okay, you got those guys. But then everyone else were from fresh meat, basically. Wes, Kenny, uh, Evan, you know? But it, to me, it was like a huge gamble by the producers to give the first, like, this, is, this was an exciting concept. You know, where like it's a, it's finally no big teams because that's what the challenge was forever. It was mm-hmm. two giant teams, yeah, and then they broke some new ground with pairings and fresh meat right before this. But then the producers were like, "Fuck it, man! One winner, uh, one guy, one girl, and it's gonna be one hundred and fifty grand." I, this unknown male cast, only you know, all these new guys, but it paid off because the this is a stacked men's division. And the women, um, it, it's also it's also varied. There's a lot of good good players in there. A lot of personality, like Beth. You know, like she was it's so intriguing th- throughout the season. Then you have these absolute monsters like Jody, and then these fucking sexy ass sweethearts like Svetlana and shit yeah, like that. Coconuts, <laughs> you get coconuts. Then you have Paula and Anissa. Like all the, the there's DM names. There. DM. She was a huge star, and then. The, the missions were Veronica top notch. Veronica was there too, wasn't she? Ver- 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 Veronica no. was not. No. Okay. No. Well, Tina was there for a little short while. Yeah. Until she got a little... Uh, <laughs> she punched Bath. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like the first episode and got sent home. And that was the last time we would see her, really. I mean, she came back to like fight in Cutthroat, cutthroat as, like, yeah. a, as a headbanger. But I'm like, you were never that great. You know? Yeah. And the punch that you did land on Bath, she jumped up. Shot. She jumped up. While up in the sky, she did like a Superman punch. Okay, Roman Reigns. But it was very light. It didn't really. I don't know. It didn't. It didn't look like it hurt too much. And it it was. It was not like a drunken fight in the house where they're like going at it in a fight. Yeah. It was like during a mission. Bath just kept talking shit. 
And then she just came up and just like punched her like that. And then it was like, oh, okay. It was like, that was kind of a cheap shot because you would not expect to get punched in that situation. Yeah, because wasn't Diem just like dealing with her, you know, uh, uh, post cancer treatments or yeah, whatever? Yeah, she just, she had just found out before yeah. the season, I think. Or no, started no, getting no. treatment. She had, no, she uh, went, just got out of treatment and her hair mm-hmm. was just kind of growing back and stuff like that. But yeah. speaking of that. But I think that was the first season that. You know, after she was diagnosed, right? Yeah, it was fresh meat, and then she did the duel. Okay, yeah. yep. Uh, but then we have Diem and CT. That, it was like, probably still one of the most iconic, like, love stories that the challenge could have produced, you know? They kind of tried to redo it in Rivals 2, but it, it was more, you know, it, they did it correctly, though. It was more adult. It was just like, oh, man, like, this is, people are cheating on each other now and shit like that. You know, it's not lovey-dovey. It's like older, like... You know, fucking worn down by more time. Like, yeah, more like, like Mad Men style. Yeah. Like like if their romance was written by Woody Allen, like, no, you, you gotta cheat. You know, like, like, <laughs> there's a reason why I have three ex-wives, you know, they can't keep their fingers out of the... Never mind. The cookie jar. Yeah, the cookie jar. And I'm like, cookie jar? Isn't that the nickname that you gave your daughter? Oops, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was saying. <laughs> Forget all that. Watch Annie Hall. <laughs> Oh my god, it's terrible. Anyways, no uh, one understands Woody <laughs> Allen references. No. All right, no Woody Allen. He's someone who's actually older than Larry King. If anybody knows who Larry King is, <laughs> yeah, they're like, what the fuck? Yeah, they're like uh, Larry King. He was from CNN, right? Like, you mean fake news? Yes, yeah, fake news. <laughs> Absolutely. Back when it was real. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. Well, anyways, going back to the duel. Uh, what are your thoughts on it, man? Like, I, to me, it it's was my one of introduction. My it was the first season I ever watched was the duel. Oh my god! And to be honest, I it was such a good season, probably that I wasn't able to appreciate it because I was new to it and I didn't understand everything about it. I was constantly confused about how <laughs> missions worked, how eliminations worked, who was safe, who was getting sent in. My focus was so much on the rules of this game and how that all worked, where I wasn't really able to appreciate all the great personalities and people. Like looking back at it, like I, I look at the list of people and I'm like, oh wow, it was you know phenomenal cast. Mm. Uh, I remember a lot of the eliminations seemed really iconic and really just uh, shocking at times when CT lost. Oh yeah, yeah. Who do you lose to, Brad? Yeah, yeah. Pastor Brad, Brad the oh. fucking giant slayer. Yeah, it was it was crazy. And then the final was the final was pretty cool. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't well, phenomenal. I mean, if, you, if you want to bring up eliminations, you also have to mention the West versus Derek pole wrestle thing. Like, oh, that yes. was brutal, man. You know, that was mm-hmm. in the dark ages. Dean versus Anissa, wasn't that? Yeah, well, no, that was kind of lame. That that's when they had to guess like how many yeah. watermelons there are or something like that. Oh, I'm thinking of something different. Oh, but I guess it was the mission before that when they said they were going to be safe and they were. Oh yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, well, just the drama behind that. I guess not the uh, elimination itself. But I just I remember that moment. And Anissa is probably at her most Anisia, ish. Yeah. Ways because she does go into a lot of eliminations. It's actually. Her and Svetlana for the girls that just kept on going until they had to go against each other. Like, that was crazy. And then, uh, yeah, you have the DMCT romance. Uh, you have, uh, like, everybody has a role in this season. Everyone has a moment. You know, Nehemiah, remember? He was just like... Oh, Nehemiah was great. Yeah. <laughs> Big easy. You know, like, usually I can't tolerate him, but he has a role to fill. And that's I... usually being a fuck-up, but that's fine. Well, it was strange for me because it was the first season I watched. Watching Big Easy, I was a huge fan. I loved Big Easy because of the season. And then I went on to watch other seasons and I became less and less of a fan of his. And it was very strange because the, my first impression was this awesome season he had. And then it kind of crumbled from there and I got annoyed by him. You were watching Cutthroat and you were like, yeah, Laurel, cut him up some more, man. <laughs> no, I, I think I watched that next and it made me really sympathize with Big uh, Easy. But then I watched like his other three or four seasons and I was like, God damn it, Big Easy, you're annoying as shit. Well, he almost died in The Gauntlet 3. That wasn't his fault. Well, they should have. Like, I, I mean, he gassed out and he couldn't do it. I mean, that's not necessarily his fault. I blame a lot of his team for that loss because they should have gotten rid of him sooner. Uh, 
They should have actually just picked him up and carried him. Yeah. Well, you know what? Enough about Big Easy. This is the dual yeah. one. <laughs> um, again, well, you know, yeah, well, Big Easy's better in this season. In fact, everyone is just better. Tyler. Tyler comes off great. Oh, Tyler was awesome. Because he puts in Johnny, John in the very first episode yeah. of Elimination. This is Johnny Remember. Banana's rookie season. Yeah. You can't forget that. And, and he was eliminated. Was that first or second episode? First episode. First yeah. episode. Yeah. It was yeah. crazy because when I first watched it, I've always heard about Johnny Bananas. And when I watched it, I was like, oh, Johnny Bananas. You know, like, oh, I bet he's going to tear it up and do something good. And then he just gets eliminated. And I was like, what? <laughs> what happened? Yeah. And it's by Tyler. And I'm sure he was blindsided by that, you know. But then they, we wouldn't have the Rivals 1 pairing with those two. You know, that's the origins right there. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that was the dual one. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> I really recommend it. Okay, what do you think is number two? So we have Gauntlet 1 and Gauntlet 2 has already been. Yes, number 8 and number 6, respectively. Do we have an Inferno? Because I feel like... There's an Inferno on the list. So it's either number 1 or number 2. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the other one has to be Rivals 1. Because we have Rivals 2 on there, but not Rivals 1. So I feel like Rivals 1 should be on there as well. So I, well, what, what's number two? What's well? Name them. Name them. Uh, for me, it's not like there's money on the line. Just fucking name two. I think seasons. Rivals One. Is Rivals two? One might be number one. Okay. Just because it's newer, but I feel like overall, it's probably Inferno. I don't even remember what Inferno season. It might have been two or three. So you don't even know which season particular? Well, I, I know the one I'm thinking of in my head, but I don't what, remember what, what it's let called. Let me ask you. Okay. Is it real world versus road rules? Or is it bad guys versus good... Uh, badasses versus good guys? Do you know? Because that'll narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't remember, but I think it's Inferno 2. All right. What, so What one was that? Good guys versus bad guys? I, yeah. I think... Yeah. Okay, I, I, I remember this season. Inferno okay. 2, for me, it probably has to be Inferno 2. So it's Inferno 2 as number 2, and then Rivals 1 as 1? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, we're going to flip-flop I that. I need an answer. Because I okay. feel like I'm just having, uh, because I've seen Rivals 1 more recently, I want to put that as number 1. Okay. But I think Inferno 2 is really good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Inferno 2 is number 2. Okay. Which, I'm like... Yeah, this was the only thing on the list, well, besides Battle of the Seasons 1, where I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, that, yeah, there's some good seasons there, and Inferno 2 didn't jump out at me, but out of the Inferno trilogy, for sure, it was the best one. Mm -hmm. It was good guys who versus badasses, and perfectly cast. Um, Inferno 3 is totally miscast. You have Johnny Bananas as a good guy. Good guy, first of all, you know. Like, yeah. Like, we both <laughs> Come yeah. On. But the Inferno two was perfectly cast in the craziest way. I remember in the first season, um, it was like Dan, some flamboyant badass guy who wanted to go against John, some sort of like self righteous Bible, like you know, like the, the oh, <laughs> remember I, yeah, only in Christ I will. <laughs> <laughs> I love that season. It was great. Because yeah. he's like, he gets voted in and he's just like, well, the reason I got voted in was because it's God's plan for me to prove himself. He's like, Jesus had to uh, prove himself by dying on the cross. And I'm like, dude, do not compare yourself going into an elimination. Don't compare that to Jesus dying on the cross, man. Like, I get your religious. <laughs> like, I have beliefs too. Don't, being on the chip, don't compare that to Jesus, all right? You're nothing like Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, again, perfectly cast. You know, um, the for the badasses, you had Derek and CT. CT, I think this was, no, this was his second appearance, but CT really comes into his own in this season because he even bullies his own teammates and shit. Like, he intimidates people, and you're like, Jesus Christ, you are on a great team, but yet you're able to do this shit. Like, Honestly, I remember this might have been my earliest memory of a challenge. Sure, the first season I watched was Fresh Me 2, but I do remember being, um, I don't know, a fucking teenager, maybe, maybe 19, 18, something like that. Yeah. And I randomly turn on MTV and I'm like, what is this? 
and I see CT like punking out Dan <laughs> like before a mission even happens like what what are you gonna do and, like, and Dan's like oh my god Jesus Christ Chris Chris don't, don't do this you know what I mean? and I'm like what the fuck is this and I turn, turned it off you know what I mean so <laughs> this is my earliest memory is this shit and the good guys perfectly cast as well Darrell Landon The Miz you know, um, future actress Jamie Chung of uh, Sorority Roll fame, um, Hangover Two fame, Judy, Brad, Jody, yes. Robin, Judy, Jody. But uh, they, were, they were the good guys. So I'll, I mean, at the beginning of this season, good guys were just going home. Uh, do you know the rest of the women? There's uh, there's this chick that I really like, Julie. Sure. Julie. Oh my gosh, she was like one of my favorites back in the day. Like this unsung favorite. I thought she was so pretty. And she was also cool. That was then, John's girlfriend, wasn't it? No, it wasn't the girlfriend. But it was weird because in this season, all of a sudden, she's totally like Bible thumper. She's like, oh my God, only in Christ will John yeah. be able to defeat the evils and temptations. That is uh, Diane, you know what I mean? Was this a season where Julie almost killed Veronica? No, that was, bef- that was before. That's oh, why okay. she had to like, oh my God. She had God. to find Christ to yeah. like... Try and forgive her for almost killing Veronica. That was in the Inferno one when that ah, happened. So, oh yeah, God. that was terrifying. That was one of the most terrifying moments I've ever watched on TV. <laughs> what is she doing? And I watched oh, it like ten, 10 years later, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "Oh, she's gonna kill her!" I'm like, "Don't unhook her." You guys are like ten stories high, hanging between buildings, and she's trying to unhook her safety harness. <laughs> Oh, that is, to me, that is Julie. That's the only reason I remember her as <laughs> for what she did to Veronica. Speaking of Veronica, Veronica was on this season. Yeah, yeah. Along with Tanya, Tina, Rachel, Beth. Like, remember this, they were all against Tanya? Cast. Remember remember those three? Rachel, Tina, and Veronica would like psychologically torture Tanya and shit, trying to get her to fuck up t- to leave and shit. And Tanya is so resilient. She's like, you know, fuck y'all. Like, I, you know, I beat up on my daddy. I don't know what she's talking about. She's like, she's used to a, like a fucked up world that she was able to take all this abuse and get to the final. It does suck that in the end, she kind of lets them down. Her and Tina, like, can't barely walk. They have to be carried the whole time by the badasses. But we also have uh, Abram. Mm-hmm. Abram is still, like, one of my favorites. And we get to have Brad and Abram in an elimination. The original, uh, the ball thing where you gotta like get past each other is partly football and basketball. Yeah. Foot basket. And I, I see the Miz went in the three Infernos and he won them all. Um, Landon did, I think. I thought it was the Miz. The Miz never went in. Not, not in Inferno too. Where do you get your information? Inferno two. <laughs> I know, I know it sounds uh, completely wrong, but... It sounds like... It looks like the Miz beat... Jeremy? Oh. Wow. That might have been they had, this, they had it graphed out, and it looks yeah. very confusing. It looks like Dan and the Miz were in an Inferno. Dan and the Miz. Well, it makes no sense, because no, 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 it shows Landon. that they both went in, but then they both came back. No, no. Uh, Miz was supposed to go in, and then land in... Decided to take his spot, and that pissed off the Miz. He's like, "What the fuck, man? I still got it. I still got it." And Landon's like, "Fuck off, man." I mean, like, no, he didn't say "fuck off, man." He's like, "Listen, old man, I'm I am here to make a name for myself. I am fucking ready to take over this fucking motherfucking season, you know, in the challenge overall, which he will." And he was like, "No, I'm gonna go in for you." And the Miz was totally like, "What the hell? Like, you know, this is a young buck taking my spot and everything else." Ah, oh, it's crazy. So it shit. says that uh, Beth quit. Yeah, because Tanya threw her shit in the pool. Remember oh, that? that that's classic right. scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all that drama. There was yeah. tons of drama this season, and a lot of times with drama, I'm not a fan of it. And it, with Beth, I'm usually not a fan of it because a lot of it just seems contrived. But uh, still, it was overall it was good. It seemed like just because Tanya is a good match for Beth. <laughs> Same with like Veronica, Tina, they they're all, I don't know, they all bring something to the table, and it, you know, it kind of works because the problem with drama is if it's just one sided and it's one person trying to start it and no one else is retaliating, it doesn't work. Yeah. But when you have multiple sides that are working 
And they're like, okay, yeah, you want to start drama? We'll do that. And then they're fighting back. Then you get a really good, uh, you get really good television with it. Oh yeah. Um, and I think in the middle of all that, there was like lifesavers or something like that. Remember? Like, yeah, where you could, yeah, you I could think save yeah. yourself or save uh, somebody else, and then go in for them. And I think CT won like the entire season. Like he kept on like winning and shit like that. Yeah, he had six wins. Damn. Episodes 2, 6, 8, 10, 14, and 15. And to talk about the end is to talk about the season overall. It's just the storyline was great. It started off, the the good guys were just getting eliminated, every single elimination mm-hmm. by the badasses. But the badasses did not get along, and that would cause them to lose missions and so slowly but surely towards the end the good guys were just able to outperform them even though they were a small compact unit um uh the miz jamie chung landon and Darrell. like consider that right now that's a power dream team yeah Yeah. that's a dream team holy shit and so when it comes to the end it's just like you know the badasses they can't get it together and shit and so it was a nice storybook sort of ending, you know? They are like, yeah, good triumphs over evil and shit like that, you know? Um, but yeah, that's number two. And number one, Rivals one. Great theme. Just just going back to, uh, you know, Inferno 2. People understand bad at, oh, good guys versus, you know, bad guys, you know? Rivals, that was such an intriguing idea, you know? And, uh, from what I remember for the for like the numbers and shit, like for views back on like when I paid attention to the, like the Nelson ratings, some of the biggest numbers that they had in a long fucking time and since then, like, you know, <laughs> they've been going down. But with Rivals One, it was like, you know, lightning in a bottle or some shit, you know? Yes. Yeah, and, yeah. and with Rivals, uh like you're pitted with your rival as a teammate. But for whatever reason, a lot of it was great to see how all the dynamics worked. Because some people they hated their rival and it was terrible for them. Other people they made it work as much as they hated that person. And other people their rivalries turned into friendships. Yeah. Uh, there's you know, and because there was people who legit like seemed to hate each other. Like, but like Adam and CT, they they were such a fucking good team together. Yeah, it was yeah, and that was that was the most intriguing pair pair because CT and Adam like they beat well CT beat the shit out of Adam you know mm-hmm. like they physically got so rough with each other and shit and it was a it was to even when I watch rewatch that episode it is so uneasy the way it's filmed you could hear the women screaming in the background and shit like that and little Adam and giant CT you're just like what the fuck is, like this is so lopsided and shit like what the fuck anyways yeah to have them together and to have CT back at all because after the duel to opening he was banished from the fucking season for a long fucking time uh, so to have him back that's a lot of views right there right they're like holy shit he's fucking back and then I think another big draw has to be the biggest draw was Wes and Kenny yeah. as a team. And you're like, after Fresh Meat 2. Yeah, yeah. They're like the greatest rivalry of them all. Yeah, yeah. It was it was so great. I was just like, I gotta fucking watch this. Uh, and then and so another, another great pairing was Leroy and Michael. Now, it was Leroy lost his partner. Adam. Adam. Whoever, I don't even remember who Adam was. Then he got a replacement partner in Michael. And it was great because Michael is just this white nerdy guy. Who's super smart, uh, athletically not so much. Yeah. But he's a super smart, brainy guy. And then Leroy is this great, phenomenal athlete. So it was just like the brains and the brawn. It oh, was yeah. this perfect team where th- each guy made up for their their partner's weaknesses, mm-hmm. and it worked. And like they they did great. They got all the way to third place. Which I mean, great. they they were the ironic team because they were actually really. Like, they were friends in their real world before this happened. So, Leroy lucks out with Adam being an asshole. Like, the, like the Leroy-Adam thing, that was a more solid rivalry. But Adam fucks up. Leroy gets his best fucking friend from the season, you know? So, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but it's still it, fun to watch. 
Yeah. yeah. They, they were definitely a great pairing. And there's, uh, there's other great pairings on here, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, Carmarie Marie and Laurel? Yeah. Like, that's phenomenal. Those two headliners right there. For sure. And, and spoiler alert, those are the few that, after, after a while, they're like, I love you more than I hate you. You know, like, they really did come together at the end. You know, and and it wasn't that easy at first. Laurel was completely dead. She would just kind of lie there, and Carl's like, "Oh my god, we gotta talk. It's two in the morning. Like, I got shit I gotta say." And Laurel's like, "Fuck you." <laughs> <He was like, laughs> Laurel is just like that asshole boyfriend, <laughs> and Carl Maria is just like, "Show me love. Show me that you love me. Show me you love me." And Laurel's just like, "No." Yeah. The more you ask for it, the more I'm just going to deny you any type of affection as a friend. Yeah. Make me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> then Laurel puts her hand in her pants while she's watching the game. <laughs> uh, and then, but we have rivalries where I'm like, well, that's cool that they're together, but I'm not sure how, how heated that is. But it would turn out to be even worse afterwards is Evan and Nehemiah. Yeah. At first, it was just so like, I'm not really sure. That is cool that they're there together, and I'm curious how they'll work. But they ended up just hating each other at the end. Um, and then the same, uh, who else didn't like each other? Oh, Sarah and her partner. Um, Caitlin? Caitlin, yeah, yeah. First? Wait. They weren't um, the first out. No. Well, I was, Caitlin, is that, is she, Caitlin transgender? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to say it if it wasn't true. Cause I was like, maybe we're just assuming something. But yeah, Caitlyn was, uh, she used to be a guy. Yeah. And then, but it, it was just so Caitlyn strange. Caitlyn Jenner? Oh my God. Oh my God, God. it is like that. Wow. <laughs> but like, it was, for me, I was a little annoyed because Caitlyn was super uncoordinated yeah. and not athletic at all. And Sarah had a history of being partnered with really crappy partners. And it, it was unfortunate because she would get partnered with like Vinny and he'd punch somebody or grab a boo no, or they, something. They, no, that's, and then, that's later. That's later. Oh, that was later. later. Yeah, but it was just, it was a long line of Sarah getting screwed over by crappy partners. Yeah. And so the, it was unfortunate to watch it because it was like, Sarah is so good, but she's always pulled down by her crappy partner. And then Caitlin just tries to throw Sarah under the bus when they lose to a puzzle. And like, wow, that's her thing. She should be able to do it. And it was... That was super annoying. <laughs> I did not like Caitlyn at all. Um, Always throwing the blame on Sarah. But we had very exciting pairs, such as uh, what's her name, Jasmine and uh, Joan. I always get her name wrong. John A. John, yeah, John A. Yeah, I like those two. Uh, I yeah. thought they were just spitting, spitting. Uh, what, what is it? Vinegar spitting. They're sassy, sweet and yeah. sour, salt and pepper. Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Like that was a cool pairing. Jasmine and John A were awesome. They, they, I really liked Jasmine a lot this season. She was. I, That's I when she guess. broke the fucking production approved mirror, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> was it was her and Brandon? Was that or maybe no, I might be thinking of exes. That was Tyree. You racist son of a bitch. <laughs> what? Jasmine was never with Tyree. Who who is she a couple with? I'm thinking of exes. I Tyree. Think. Tyree? Not Ty. Tyree. Wait, who's Tyree? I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I'm thinking of Ty. Tyree, uh, a oh, big dude, man. He was he was he was paired with Davis that season. Remember Davis? No, no. Um. <laughs> I'd recognize her face if I seen it. I don't know. Uh. The season. Okay, I'm moving on. Yeah, we, yeah, moving we had on, Jen on. and Mandy, which. I like me some Jen because she's really hot, even though I know she's a goddamn bitch. But sometimes, sometimes women are hot enough for me where I'm like, I don't care. I don't fucking care. I don't care. Um, and then, you know, her and Mandy, that was a... Uh, but Jen had that storyline with Adam where she was like, she would mess around with him, but then talk shit about him the next morning and shit. I'm like, no, Adam. Oh, you know, like a fun. Fun. oh, oh yeah. Bro, she that. was totally like friend zoning him kind of. <laughs> But like leading him on and then friend zoning him. No, no, they were still like she, like 
she still let him like feel her up and stuff. Yeah, but she would never go public with it. Like I anytime he, I if if I was Adam, I wouldn't care, man. Adam's I mean, like, I'm really. He would have the confession. He'd be like, I'm really, really liking Jen. Yeah. He's like, I have such strong feelings for her. And Jen's just like, what? No, I don't remember that. I don't think that happened. Just completely deny it. And she's saying, I don't remember that happening, but there's like, they're showing video proof of it happening. Because she, she did not want to admit that she right. was getting with uh, The big stars is CT and Adam. Like, they really... But Adam also had the storyline with Jen. And, Jen and, and Adam was like, listen, man, uh, if we weren't in this house, we'd be uh, naked in the morning and we'd eat breakfast naked then we'd go fuck <laughs> naked and like he, I was like what the fuck is this and shit he's like listen guys we'd be married right now so as soon as this is done we're gonna get together and shit like that so that was a crazy uh, that was a crazy storyline uh, what else Wes the Wes versus CT angle like the whole house was against CT at least the guys the power like the Kenny Wes Johnny Tyler Evan Nehemiah they all want to CT out of there, right? Yep. But they weren't vocal about it. That was all back, you know, that was behind closed doors. Wes was the was the poster boy. He was the one who was like, fuck you, CT. Like, we're going after you and shit like that. And CT's like, no, fuck you. I'm going to fucking, I'm going to bitch you up for like, what was it? Like 20 hours straight or something like that. Remember that? And then Wes, like... It's just sitting there, like, drinking wine. And CG's like, you can't stop me. I will fucking smash it. You know, all this shit. And then Wes goes up to his bedroom. They share a bedroom. That's super awkward. Wes takes his mattress and throws it off the balcony. <laughs> You're like, holy fuck. CT goes up there and, you know, puts the mattress up. He's like, you think you can get rid of me by throwing a 20-pound mattress out there? Fuck you. And then he starts, like, talking shit at him again for another three hours. Like, it was crazy, man. Uh, and then CT and Laurel, remember that shit? That was a that was a relationship. Yeah, that was the crazy. They're thing. like they're getting towards the end. They're like, oh, there's only a few people left. We could run a final together. Yeah, that's what they were hoping for until CT got screwed over in a puzzle. No, no, no. It was C. No, this was the. Oh no, that was the football. Iconic the elimination. Gridiron where they're running yes. down in the trenches. And oh then, my gosh! Yes, oh, it was yeah. CT and Adam versus Johnny and Tyler. Winner gets to go on to the final. Like this shit was heated. Like this was. This has got to be like one of the best eliminations. Even though it ended it's probably terribly, the best ever. But it's just yeah, it's a great showcase by CT. That's when he literally. Um, is able to tackle two men at the same time. He hits both Johnny and Tyler, tackling them. It, like it was fantastic. They both got leveled, and they were both like concussed. Oh yeah. Just like, oh my god, <laughs> how can we do this? And then Adam just gets too tired at the end, and he can't climb up the hill to put the ball in his place. But didn't at the beginning of it, didn't he? Didn't he was he, gra- he was he was messing up the order. Like yeah, the, yeah. Because you're supposed to take a certain color ball and put it in your rack, and a certain color ball from your rack and put it in the other side. Right, right. But he was he was mixing it up. Yeah, Adam choked. Uh, yeah, it, that was such a shocking ending because really, it felt like the whole show after it was all said and done was about CT and Adam. Um, because with my favorite Wes and Kenny, they were turned into a joke this whole season. They were always failing missions, like whoa, falling out of boats, getting DQ'd, having to go into eliminations. That's when Wes would turn on yeah. the afterburners yeah. and save their ass. Wes you know? was always dominant to get them out. Yeah, and then to have, but and that was another beautiful part of the whole fucking thing to have Kenny and Wes not really threats. You know, they're kind of fucking up because they really can't get on the same page. They really don't like each other. You know. To have Wes save Kenny, and Kenny looks so bad in eliminations, they get to the final, and Wes looks bad. Kenny literally carries him up the mountain and shit like that. It was, it like, as a fan, did it suck to see Wes lose? But, in you know, sure. But, like, as a writer and shit, I'm like, this is I- irony. This is, like, great storytelling. It's, it's crazy, you know? Yeah, it was the, the person who carried the team through the entire season suddenly is failing in the final, and then... Kenny is picking up the weight, the dead weight. Because that that was their forte. I mean, like, Wes is one of the greatest eliminators of all time. And Kenny is, like, one of the best finalists of all time, next to Johnny Bananas. You know what I mean? So That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Also, uh, this season, there was Evelyn and Paula. Which, yes. What, um, was this Paula's first one? 
Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. It, it was basically because of Evelyn. Evelyn was so dominant, I feel like. And Paula, Paula did enough. She didn't screw up at all. That was all she needed to do, was don't mess things up. Paula, Evelyn did absolutely no uh, confessional. She did absolutely no relationships in the house. That was all up to Paula. Mm. Paula was messing around with Mike. That was a weird thing. Yeah. But... Oh my God. Paula. Everything Paula's in is always so awkward and weird. Weird. It's just weird. Weird. <laughs> it's just cringeworthy. Everything Paula does on. It, was this the season where she had all that terrible acne all over her face? <laughs> no, that was Rebels too. But... Oh my God. <laughs> That's so oh. funny. I know exactly what you're talking about. I just think of Paula. I just think of those zits on her but, chin. But every Rivals though, Paula is there to win. She is booked to win. Yeah. Her, her her rivalry with Evelyn is just very like the only reason why they're paired together that I can think of is that they were always on separate sides of the war. That is Wes and Kenny. You I think I mean? it had to have been rivals because of the island, right? Yeah, but that even but, then, but it really had nothing to do with those two. It wasn't up to Evelyn to yeah. take her spot. It yeah. was it, it was, was yeah yeah Kenny. it was up to Kenny and uh, Johnny. Ke- yeah 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 and Derek I think. Yeah, so it wasn't. They, they choose those Evelyn two. to go on the boat and not Paula, but yeah. you know because they were choosing between Evelyn and Paula, suddenly they're rivals now. There, there was way more stronger rival, rivalry, uh, chick rivalries all around. Think of Teresa and Camilla. You know, like those moments. They at least have a moment that they could show, but it was the Paula and Evelyn thing, where it's like that's non-existent. But they created a hell of a team, you know, and that was really. It was almost a foregone conclusion that they were going to win. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. Laurel and Carmaria could have done it, but it was just throughout the seasons, it was always Paula and Evelyn winning those missions. You know, the final was the very first time we had a two day final. That was mind blowing at the time. Overall, I'd say uh, it was great for me personally. I wanted Kenny and West to win, but you know, they yeah, get, they, I, I was a little disappointed in the final just because yeah. of production and the way they uh, after the first day. Kenny and Wes were way ahead. I by 45 minutes. I mean, this is behind, behind the scenes. You have to look this shit up. But yeah, they, they were got, ahead by 45 minutes. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, now to day two. And they're like, well, because you won the first day, we'll give you a 10-minute advantage. Two, two minutes. A two-minute advantage for the second day. Yeah. So it was like basically everything that happened in the first day, they just threw it away. And they're like, all right, we'll give you two minutes on the clock because you won that first day. Yeah, and they just threw away their forty-five minute advantage, thus making it so bananas and Tyler could win. I mean, well, it was all up in the air too. They had to climb up the rocks, and then hope to find some beakers. Some yeah, a little GPS beakers. thing, and then it would give you a signal. It would start beeping once you got close to a key or something like that. Mm. And then once you got the key, then you could unlock. The box, which had, you know, the championship belt in it, which meant you won. <laughs> oh, I wish. And, no, it was just this big statue. But so there. they're at the top of the mountain. They make it all up there, and they're all holding this GPS, and they just have to walk in circles until they get lucky and stumble across this little hidden thing where right. it had a key in it. And it was yeah. so random. Yeah. It was like, just, just make it a race to the mountain top. Whoever touches the flag at the top first wins. It's not hard. Don't overthink it, MTV. Yeah. Well, that's it. That was the top 10 overall. And uh, I just got to say, like, subscribe, comment. This was Battle of the Challenges podcast with Vincent Cloud. And Hardcore Dave.